simple uh, compound interest calculation. Okay, but let's have a look at I suppose let's have a look at this side of the formula here. Okay, which is the total amount that's accrued with respect to your repayments, and let's try to derive this particular amount, and let's keep in mind this particular schedule here. Okay, so let me have a look at that. Okay, so what I'd like to be able to calculate is I'd like to be able to calculate this summation, this summation of all of these payments and the interest that has been accrued based off each payment. Okay, so let's now start to generalize. So let's say, okay, let's say a mortgage, okay, okay, a mortgage is taken out, is taken out, okay, over n years, okay, and let's see what these repayments look like. Okay, now you can actually see when the mortgage was taken out, when the mortgage was taken out over four years, okay. Okay. When it was taken out over four years, okay, uh, there was one, two, three, four, five. There was five of these particular lines within this particular schedule. Okay, uh, but when it comes to the repayments, there was only one, two, three. There was only four of them. Yeah. Okay. So let's just keep that in mind as well. So what I'm going to say is this: is that the summation, okay, the sum of our payments, okay, let's call that sigma f. Okay, let's call F a repayment. Okay, the total summation of our repayments, uh, it should be equal to. Okay, well, it should be equal to the amount that we repay. Okay, the fixed amount that we repay. Okay, okay, compounded for a certain number of years. Okay, now we took this mortgage out over four years, and you can see that the compounding for the first repayment was three years. So that's like, if we take it out over five years, the compounding for the first repayment would be four years. If we take it out over ten years, the compounding for the for the first repayment would be nine years. If we take it out over n years, the compounding for the first repayment would be n minus one years. Okay. So what that gives us is that the first repayment, okay, should compound, okay, and should accrue one plus i raised to the power of n minus one. This is the total accrual of interest on your first repayment. The repayment is going to be in the account for n minus one years. The next repayment is going to be in the account for it's going to be in the account for n minus two years. The next repayment is going to be in the account for n minus three years, n minus four years, and so on and so forth. Okay? The third last repayment, okay, we look at the third last one here. Okay, is going to be in the account for two years. The second last one is going to be in the account for one year, and the last one is going to be in the account for zero years. So actually, what we end up with is that the the third last repayment is in the account for f times one plus i to the power of two, because it's going to be compounded for two years. The second to last payment is in the account for one year, so it's f times one plus i raised to the power of one, and the last repayment is in the account for zero years, so it's f times one plus i to the zero, okay? So this is the total, I suppose, let's say accrual with interest of all my repayments over my years, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to do some, uh, let's say, sleight of hand here, yeah? Because we want to we want to sum up this this let's say finite series, okay? It's a finite series over a certain number. There's a certain number of terms in here. There's actually n terms, yeah. Okay, because we have this zero term. It goes one, two, third, fourth, fifth, n minus two, n minus one term, and then this term here gives us there's actually n terms in this series, and we want to sum them up. Now I suppose we could use the formula to sum up a particular series, but what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of sleight of hand. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take the sum of the f's, the sum of the repayments, and we're going to multiply it by a 1 plus i. We're going to multiply it by one of these terms here, okay? So what we're going to calculate is 1 plus i times the sum of the repayments, okay? Now, let's just keep in mind a little identity, okay? So note, okay, note, okay, that a to the power of b times a to the power of c is the same as a to the power of b plus c. Okay? So when you have the same base and when you raise it to different powers or the same powers, okay, the product is actually simply the base raised to the sum of the exponents. Yeah. So in this case here, when I take 1 plus i and when I multiply by sigma f, I need to multiply by each one of these terms. Okay? And let's have a look at the first one. The first term is going to be it's going to be, well, it's 1 plus i times it, so it's going to be 1 plus i times 
f times 1 plus i to the n minus 1. Okay, but well, that's the same as, okay, that's the same as f times 1 plus i times 1 plus i to the n minus 1. Now, there's actually a power here of 1. So you can actually see our base is the same. So the base is a, it's 1 plus i, okay? The power is 1 here, and the power is n minus 1 here, okay? So actually all we need to do is sum these thing, two things together. So what this gives us is f times 1 plus i is the base, the common base. The power here is 1, and we need to add on the other power, which is n minus 1. And that gives us f times 1 plus i raised to the power of n. So actually, the effect of multiplying the first term by 1 plus i okay, was to increase the exponent or increase the power by 1. In other words, this term was shifted, and let me write it down here. So when I multiply this term by 1 plus i, I actually get 1 plus i raised to the power of n. Okay? And you see what's going to happen. When I multiply this term here by 1 plus i, it's going to get shifted across here. So it's going to be plus f times 1 plus i to the n minus 1. Plus... The term just in front of it, I add 1 onto the exponent, okay, to the power, which is going to be n minus 3, plus 1, gives me f times 1 plus i to the n minus 2, and so on, all the way down, okay? This term here gets shifted before the plus, okay? It becomes f times 1 plus i to the power of 3. This term here becomes f times 1 plus i squared, and this term here gets shifted across to be f times 1 plus i to the power of 1. Okay, so now we have, I suppose, two expressions, two equations, yeah, okay, with summations in them, okay, that are just slightly different. They've been shifted by this particular term here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sum these terms up, okay, we're going to sum across these. Actually, what we're going to do is subtract, doesn't matter which one we do, but I'm going to...